It is an honour and a privilege to be speaking to you as the Royal Logistic Corps' third Master General of Logistics. And in so doing, I firstly wish to pay tribute to my predecessor, Lieutenant General Sir Mark Poffley, who served, guided and led us for nine years whilst advocating for the advancement of the Corps. So what of my role and what does it mean to be the Master General of Logistics? Well, first off, it gets me out to see all of you delivering logistic effect, which is the best bit. But it also means that I'll be championing the logistic function at the heart of decision making within the army and into defence. I'm also responsible for the governance of the Royal Logistic Corps and with it the maintenance of our esprit de corps, including standards, culture, ethos and behaviours, more of which in a moment. Now, I've been part of the RLC family since its formation in April 1993 and can trace my roots back a little further to parts of the forming union. What I can say sincerely is that I am and will always remain a proud logistician. And as someone who served with and alongside every trade and specialism we have in the Corps, it feels good to say that, for I know that you all feel the same. However, it is fair to say that as a collective across defence, we have not always afforded the correct level of importance to the role that logistics plays as a capability in enabling the way we operate and fight. Some of the causes relate to the structures, the systems and the processes required to deliver the logistic effect not being prioritised, whereas others stem from us occasionally self-censoring and not speaking up. What is not in doubt, though, is the quality of the people we have undertaking those logistic roles and specialisms across our regular and reserve regiments and units. In this, my opening gamut as your Master General of Logistics, I want to focus on three key themes and set out a little more about what motivates me. The first relates to Future Soldier and our core strategy. For the Corps, the outcome is positive, for you will know that we've been able to preserve our regimental structures at the right level and in the right numbers, a vital enabler to the way we envisage operating and fighting in an era of constant competition. But we must not stand still, for transformation is required to support a force that will be persistently engaged more integrated and operating at greater reach at the same time as being more dispersed. Going forward, we must build upon the functional expertise we have retained by exploiting data to inform logistic choice and generate the freedom and the tempo to manoeuvre. So there will be some turbulence and necessary upheaval for change is unsettling and it will need sound leadership to get us through it. You have my commitment and that of the senior leaders in the Corps to explain what we're doing and why it matters. We must also all be comfortable with uncertainty though and be bold where it matters. The strategic vision that we've set out in our Corps strategy is clear. A world-class, innovative and adaptable Corps sustaining continuous activity at home and around the globe, all underpinned by a people-focused ethos and the exploitation of data and cutting edge technology. In the coming months, you will hear how we intend to refresh that strategy and you should be actively seeking to engage with it and support us in delivering the strategic goals and objectives. You will also hear how I intend to resource those outcomes with our own core non-public funds where it is right to do so, particularly when it comes to supporting and developing our people. Secondly, I wish to position the RLC at the forefront of the sustainability journey that the Army's embarked upon and guide where we must get to. As much as anything, this will require a changed mindset, for I see significant opportunities to be enhancing operational effectiveness, which will inevitably be progressively degraded if no action is taken by not moving towards a more sustainable and greener logistics enterprise. In so doing, we will maintain the principle that operational effectiveness and capability should not be compromised solely to deliver a sustainable solution. The RLC should view itself as the enablers of self-sufficient operations, and in so doing, champion the alternative sources for the generation of power via sustainable and portable equipment, as well as technologies such as solar power. This ought to be our aiming mark, as it allows greater resilience. Energy efficiency can serve as a force multiplier because it increases the range and endurance of forces in the field and can reduce the number of combat forces diverted to protect energy supply lines, 
which are both vulnerable to asymmetric and conventional attacks and disruptions. Over the months ahead, you will see a structured programme underpinned by the core strategy to harness ideas for how we, as a core, become fast followers of sustainable logistics. Finally, and unquestionably the most important of my themes relates to our culture and the standards and behaviours we espouse as a core. You will have heard that the Army is getting behind the notion of teamwork, being the basis for exploiting the very best of working together. For it is about maximising the talents of all of our people to achieve the goals and ultimately drive better operational outcomes. You should know that I wish to see the RLC acting as the beacon for the rest of the Army to follow when it comes to creating inclusive, high-performing teams comprised of leaders at all levels that can get the very best out of their people, working in concert to ensure that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. We have, after all, been an organisation with our trades open to all for longer than most, and thus recognise that we can achieve advantage through difference. Hashtag teamwork has to be about our day-to-day -day life, where we actively strive to remove barriers, maximise diversity and enhance operational capability through true inclusion. I should add that this is not just about gender, race and religion. For refreshingly, we are increasingly recognising that social and cognitive diversity ought to form part of the conversation. Now, as someone with neurodiversity, namely dyslexia, that I'd consciously hidden for most of my military career, I'm now finally able to seek the positives and what it means for me. Today, I publish a personal diversity and inclusion statement as MGL and as part of the OP teamwork endeavour. In conclusion, it is an honour and a privilege to serve our core as the MGL. And in so doing, I will use the platform it presents as the basis to serve you and to promote the cause of logistics in the Army and defence as a whole. Thank you.